Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Emily. Today's video is a compilation of fall and Christmas DIY projects and thrift lifts. A lot of these items were prepared for the Junkin' Punkin' Vintage Market that I had in last week's video. So I have like seven or eight projects and I thought it would be good to share all of them because it's kind of transitioning between fall and Christmas projects here on my channel. So if you guys are interested, let's get started. For this first project, we are going to be using four by four wood blocks. So these wood blocks I actually had turned into firecrackers for a 4th of July DIY video and I am repurposing them. So the measurements for these, if you didn't see that video, they are the small one is 12 inches, the medium is 14 inches, and then the tall one is 16 inches. I'm leaving the white small one as it is, and it is distressed already. I did sand down the middle one and the large one so that I could repaint them. And I'm doing shades of gray because I wanted more of a neutral look for these fall blocks. So they're kind of going to be like pumpkins, but they don't have to be as well. They could just be wall, you know, fall decor. But I left the wood or the um, the rope that I had originally used for the firecracker. I just unraveled it so it looked more whimsical like. And once I sanded down the top, the middle one and the tall one so that it matched the distressing of the small one, I am going to, going to be using the Fruitful Harvest stamps by. IOD. So this is my first time using these stamps and if it's your first time using a stamp set you definitely want to give it a little bit of a scuff sand. Here I am using a 320 um, grit sand pad. You can also use a 220 if that is all that you have. You just want to give it a light scuff sand so that the ink um, has something to grab onto with the stamps better. So it is a little bit of a workout to get these stamps off the first time. Um, and I really thought I was gonna rip it apart, but these are really, really strong and it worked out perfectly fine. So for this first large, or for the first uh, wood block, I'm gonna show you how I did it. And I don't recommend doing it this way um, because it's not very, pliable. So I wanted this stamp, you can see how long it is, I wanted it to fold over the side of the wood block so that it cascaded on the side. Well because the the clear piece that I'm using to hold it in place, it isn't as bendable as the stamp itself is, so it made it very difficult to in one you know, one swoop attach or have the stamp hit the side of the wood on the other side, <clears throat> excuse me. So I had to kind of line it back up again and there was a little bit of like double tapping of the stamp so you can kind of see like a shadow effect. It's not the end of the world, it just, I didn't like how I did it this way. So for the middle one and the smallest one, I, once I inked the stamp onto, on that clear pad, I removed the, um, the stamp so that it is more pliable and it's free handed. And then I can just roll the wood block as I am applying the stamp. So you'll see, I'm going to roll this, the wood block while I'm holding onto the stamp and press down on it so that there's no movement. I don't get any of that shadow effect from like you know, double tapping on the stamp. And these worked out really well. And I love how each, because they're smaller, they're different sizes, the stamps look different on each block. And then I'm gonna clear coat it with polycrylic. And then I am gonna add a little bit of green moss to the top of them, which I didn't show here, but that is it for this. And you'll have to let me know what you guys think. I don't have the best photos. I thought I took photos of these after I finished, um, but I don't. So I just have a picture of them in my booth space and like right after I finished it. So sorry for not having the best staged photos, but I hope you guys like this project. I 
I thrifted this riser at an estate sale slash garage sale um, probably a couple months ago. I'm finally getting around to flipping it and giving it a little makeover for this event. So I wanted to give it a a neutral kind of like more farmhouse vibe. I wanted it to cater to a lot of people's like home decor palette. So I'm going with the white painted legs and then I'm going to do like a faux stain on the top. So for the legs on this first leg here, I ended up going with more of a full coverage of the white chalk paint. But on this other leg, I did a more distressed like dry brush kind of effect on it and I really like how that one looked so I ended up doing that for the other three and then I sanded down that um, that first one just a little bit. You guys will have to let me know what you guys prefer. Do you like the more full coverage or do you like the more distressed um, look of the leg that I'm painting right now? For the top, I like I said, I'm doing more of a faux stain and I'm going to be using dark and decrepit for the for the stain. So I'm taking a wet paper towel and I am wiping it all over the wood to kind of um, just dampen the wood, not have it soaking wet, just to make the dark and decrepit um, apply a lot easier like it just it kind of just like glides across so I did that I made sure I also stained the sides and I did let it fully dry and then this piece is done um, this one was a simple and quick makeover I really want to find these feet because I would love to make another riser like this myself with these feet it was really cute and people asked me at the event if I had more of them and I was like no unfortunately I just have this one so I'm gonna have to keep my eye out. If you guys know where you can find these feet, please let me know. Okay, this project is another quick and easy one. I grabbed this wood, I'm just gonna call it a wood tray. Um, I grabbed it from an estate sale a while ago. I got it for $1.50 and immediately when I saw it, I thought that this would make such a beautiful tray or a noodle board. So I brought it home and it fit perfectly on my stove as a noodle board and I was so excited. So I really, really liked the the wood grain of this and I liked the color I just wanted to soften it a little bit so I'm just taking 220 grit sandpaper and I'm giving it a good soft even sand and it just removed that harsh brown like finish that was on top of it and it brought through this beautiful wood grain and it's just softer and warmer and it just it looks so beautiful so I sanded both sides or all, all the sides I sanded everything down and then I kept going back and forth if I wanted to put anything on it like if I wanted to paint it or if I wanted to put wording or or something on it and I ended up not because I just loved how old and vintage that this piece looked once I sanded it down and I gave it a good clean I think it just had so much character and I didn't want to ruin that character. So all I'm going to do with this piece now that I've got it cleaned up after I sanded it is I'm just going to add these two handles which I grabbed from Hobby Lobby. I've had them for a while um, and I'm just going to make sure that the handles are center on that thin wood strip on either side and I'm just going to screw them in. Um, and then this piece is done. I told myself that I would bring it to the Junkin' Pumpkin event, and if it didn't sell, then I would keep it for myself as a noodle board, um, and it ended up selling. I mean, I'm glad that you know it's going to somewhere that someone is going to be happy and going to use it, but I am kind of sad because I really liked it on my stove. Um, you guys will have to let me know what you think of this one.
All right, for this project, we're going to be making two floral arrangements to bring to the event. I do like to have some greenery um, spread throughout my, my setup, so I wanted to create some floral arrangements. Um, this first one here that I am working on, I did do this project in a video a while ago, and if I can find it, I will link it in the description if you're interested to see how I did the two images, stamp images, on the wooden box. Um, I kept the eucalyptus in here, and I'm just taking this fall pick that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I'm taking it apart so that I can spread those pieces throughout the arrangement um, to make it look more full. And I'm really sorry if you can hear my dog in the background. He just got a new bone and he is going to town. Um, sorry about that. So for this second one, I'm doing the same type of floral arrangement with the eucalyptus and then the fall pick. Um, and while I was working on this, I was trying to decide what I wanted to do on this wood block. I didn't want to leave it as is, so I decided to try some transfers. I am using the ephemeral melange transfer um, from IOD, and I'm picking two transfers that are they that the colors go together, but they also go with the colors in the floral arrangement pick that I put in that I put in there. I wanted it all to kind of be cohesive. So I had a vision, I thought it was going to look better than, I don't know, I'll be honest, I feel like it doesn't, I thought it was going to be better than what it turned out to be. Um, I don't know, like, does this ever happen to you guys? I feel like I've said this before, like I have this vision and it just, sometimes it kind of just falls flat, um, but I was also on autopilot at this point. I think I had like two or three more days left to go and I was just trying to knock out some stuff um, but you'll have to let me know what you know give me some suggestions like what would you have done with these wood wood blocks or these wood boxes would you have done a floral arrangement would you have painted them you know if you did a transfer like what transfer would you have done would you have gone more fall you know just give me some suggestions because um, I do have them in my booth right now and if they don't sell I'm going to pull them and I want to do something else with them so definitely leave your suggestions in the, in the comments for me please I would love to hear what you guys have to say Okay, so these four items here, they're not actually going to be thrift flips, but I wanted to share these because I did bring these to the event and I decided that I didn't want to just leave them as is and put them in my space. I wanted to kind of zhuzh them up a little bit and add a little something to them. So I did grab some Christmas greenery that I had in my stash and I added just a little sprig of the greenery to each item and I attached it with twine. And then I decided that I wanted to add tags to them as well. So I have these wood, um, they're actually wood ornaments. I got a huge pack from Amazon last year and I don't think I ever ended up using them for Christmas time. So I grabbed a couple out so that I could make tags with them. And then I was trying to go, I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to put on them. And then I remembered that a lot of the transfers from the ephemeral melange transfer set from IOD, they have a lot of some really small transfers. So I went through the book and I found ones that would work or what I thought would work well with each item. And if you haven't used a transfer um, before, um, you're just going to remove the white backing from the from the transfer and then you're going to apply the transfer onto whatever surface it is. On this case, it is raw wood. And then normally you use a burn the burnishing tool that it comes with. However, I could not find mine for the life of me. And I just used whatever I had closest to me, which ended up being a pair of scissors. And 
for this surface, it ended up working really well. Um, I did find the burnishing tool as I cleaned up a couple of days later, but <laughs> normally you would use the burnishing tool. And then at the end, you want to seal your transfer. So I'm just using Minwax Polycrylic. I believe this is like the ultra matte finish. And I'm just doing one coat on top of these. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to attach the tags with some more twine onto each item and then these are done. Again, I just wanted to, I wanted to share these, um, you know, in case people do have craft events coming up and they just want to add a little something to an item that they have. Um, creating a tag or adding just a little sprig of greenery to an item can really transform the piece and it may stick out to somebody better than it just being left as is. So I just wanted to share that and I hope you guys like these. Okay, I have several um, like frames, scraps that I need to do something with. So I have these three for now. Um, this one was glass that I painted um, like chalkboard a while ago and I was gonna use it for myself for something but I'm not going to anymore. I've had three others like this and I put chicken wire in them and they sold. So I'm gonna do that for the other two as well. Um, I am going to, going to be painting, um, I'm going to try and do like a little, um, I've got sawmill gravy, driftwood, and hurricane gray, and I'm going to paint each frame. Um, I'm not sure about this one, I really like that one, um, so we're going to see what happens with that, but the um, chicken wire is actually not really like chicken wire. I'm trying this one. It's, I don't know, like what, like rabbit wire or something. Um, I got it from Home Depot and I got the half inch um, size. They also had like a quarter inch, but I liked um, that size better. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to knock these out and I will add some wreaths to them. So this is a close-up of the wire that I'm using in case you're interested in getting it from Home Depot. I'm sure Lowe's also has it. Um, I am only going to show one of these because it's all the same. But for that third frame that I was torn about if I was going to paint or not, I did end up leaving it as is. I did not paint it. I really liked the natural wood of it. Um, and I had a wreath that looked really, really good with the natural color of it. So I kept it as is. But I did paint these other two, the two lighter gray options. Um, I will say that this wire, it's, it's easy to apply, but... It did take me some time. I think it took me nine minutes just to do this one frame um, because the wire is just coiled up. And so when you're trying, you know, if you have a second set of hands, it's probably a lot easier, but you can do it by yourself as well. Um, I did want to share these because these are great pieces to do if you like to flip furniture and you end up removing the cabinet doors um, or you know you're doing a makeover you know in your house or something or you find them on the side of the road take the glass out and then you can create this wall decor um, from these you know repurposed shelves you can add chicken wire to them and then add a wreath and the wreaths can be changed out you know for the seasons you can even add like Christmas cards to these, you know, especially these bigger ones. Just add a clothespin and your car, your Christmas cards to it. And it's super cute for Christmas. I did that last year with one of these tall ones that I have. 
And once the chicken wire is attached to the back side, um, I also did add two D hooks to the back of each as well so that they can be hung on the wall if whoever buys it wants to do that. And then I did add three different wreaths. So two of them I attached the wreaths to the chicken wire with zip ties. And then for the third one you saw, I did use ribbon um, to attach it to the back side, and I used the nail gun to, to apply it. So I hope you guys did enjoy these, and you'll have to let me know which one was your favorite. I hope you all enjoyed this video and please let me know your favorite in the comments. I am so excited to be transitioning into Christmas projects. I have so many ideas and I have been writing them down in my phone and on sticky notes as they come to me of projects that I want to try and do or if I find them somewhere then noting those down as well. So I cannot wait. Hopefully I can get all of these projects done. So. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.